Hi, it's Melanie, the artist behind Brown Eyes Fine Art. And this is a work in progress video. And it is of Faye, the rescue pit bull. She is done in pastel pencils. I used both a Derwent pastel pencil and a Faber-Castell pit pastel pencil. So this video will show just a portion of what I completed. So it's not the full work in, in progress, just a portion of the face, but it will still give a little direction on how the dog's fur is done, the shading, the different colors used in the, the shadows and in the highlights. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. Thank you. So as you can see here, uh, Faye is being done in pastel pencils. And uh, this is the Derwent pastel pencil that I'm using and I'm capturing the base layer colors. So very lightly putting down a color that I would like to um, come through the layers that I put on top. So in other words, if it's a shadow area, I'm putting in a darker color. If it's a highlighted area, I'm putting in a lighter color. This is also the time that I would add any shades or hues um, of the peach colors, um, sometimes blue, sometimes a light purple, depending on what effect I'm trying to make. Uh, the other half of the face, the majority of that side was done with the uh, Faber-Castell pastel pencils and uh, the reason I was using both is uh, I was seeing which one I preferred to work with and I liked I liked both of them. Both of them worked just fine. The uh, Derwent and the Faber-Castell basically laid down the same. Um, I just stuck with the Derwent only because they had more colors to choose from. Uh, they have a tin of 72 while Faber-Castell at this time only has 60. So when it came to some of the unique shading that I needed in the ears, um, the Derwent offered more color choices that I, that I needed. I am noticing that the uh, video seems to have some visual problems and I apologize for that. This is my first time using this camera and I did not see those effects taking place while I was doing the actual drawing, but I have to admit that I wasn't looking at the, the uh, video that was being produced. I was paying attention to my drawing. <laughs> okay, so at this point, um, I'm still laying down layers um, to cover up the teeth of the paper. And I, I also chose, uh, this is a pastel matte paper. And I chose this color because of the color of the dog. It helps out quite a bit um, when it comes to adding grays uh, because since the paper is already a gray color, I'm kind of starting at a good base already. So I just have to lighten it up. Um, so as you can see, as I, as I uh, lay down the, the color, I'm, I'm actually using a certain direction with the, uh, the pencil. I'm going in the direction that I actually want the fur to lay. That way I don't have some odd pencil marks that I have to cover up later. So I just ensure that I have everything going in the direction that I want the fur to, to look like it's laying. Um, the particular tool that I'm using at this point that is not a pencil is a pastel blender. 
It has a soft rubber end and I also use the tool in the direction of the fur and it, it helps blend in the different colors to uh, give more of a base layer. And then on later on top, um, I'll add it back in some of the detail. So it, it's a lot of the, the same thing, putting down the layers of colors, then going over it with the blender, which smooths it down, and then going back over it again and adding the uh, fur details so that it all just doesn't look like um, one big color. You, you actually see details of the way the fur lays down. So in this particular uh, pastel piece, I, I mostly used, um, of course, white, and then I had a um, off-white and a cream that was used mostly on the, the left side of the, the dog's face where the light was coming down brighter and there was more highlights. On this side of the face, it was darker as the uh, the large ear of the pit bull put this side of the face more in shadow. And so on this side, mostly uh, light grays and dark grays were used, um, less of the cream color. I think there's only a few areas where I um, added it in just to have more of a, a blending and matching color with the other side. Um, you'll also see the pencil um, that I'm using right now is not a pastel pencil. There's a couple of times for details that I will use my polychromos. Uh, the white and the black around the eyes doing the details and around the nose uh, doing the details. I use these pencils for the detail work because I can get the point of these pencils sharpened um, to a very nice point where I can get in there and get the fine details going. Um, if you've never worked with pastel pencils before, sharpening them to a very fine point can be difficult at times and the uh, chalkier, softer lead will break off often if you try to get it to too much of a point. And of course you can get sharpeners that uh, will be able to get you to where you need to go, but I just prefer and am more comfortable with using my polychromos, uh, which is an oil base colored pencil to do detail work on top of the pastel. And um, I'll go back over it oftentimes with a soft layer of pastel to blend it in. So now I'm um, going over and putting in more layering detail so that the the shadows come out more and uh, blending them in again um, and again this is like repeat rinse and repeat again where you add the layers you blend it in and you add the layers again and until you get to the, to the uh, texture that you like and and the tooth of the paper is is covered um, pastel pencils uh, put down pigment a lot smoother and quicker than colored pencils so the process is a lot quicker and uh, I can get my drawings that are done in the pastel medium out a lot faster than the uh, color pencil which happens to be one of the slowest mediums to use.
So now I'm starting again um, doing some color mapping because I'm starting at another uh, part of the, the face uh, further down and um, there I'll start adding in the darker colors as the base and then going over them again with the the lighter colors that I use as the found as a foundation as well the grays and the whites and when you're laying down the darker colors even though you're using it as a base and you are going to be putting other layers of colors on top you still want to use a, a light hand it's it's much easier to add another layer of a dark color if you need to go darker than it is trying to lighten up something that you put down too dark. So use a light hand and the lighter the hand the more layers you can put on and then uh, later the more details because um, after a while if you're pressing down hard you actually start to deteriorate the teeth the tooth of the paper and then it won't take pig pigment anymore and then you're left at a point where um, the layers that you have are the layers that you have it's not going to do any more um, coloring so as I move forward uh, on this particular part um, I just wanted to also make note that I, I work from top left down to bottom right so on this particular drawing, the, the last thing I'll be doing on the face of the dog will be the uh, right lower cheek and around the mouth and, and the, the nose. And that's just so that um, since I am right-handed, I'm not smearing work I've already done. Uh, in, in fact, the ear on the right-hand side I had to redo a couple of times because you can see um, I will accidentally lean my arm, my hand on it <laughs> and with pastels they have a tendency to come off on your hand come off the paper So uh, the very last part of this dog that I will do is, is the, uh, the body. And that, that is not on this video, but um, that's, that will be the last part of the progression of this, this drawing. Um, in, this, in this particular reference photo, the, the light is coming from up above behind the dog. And, um, in some of the areas where the, the white fur uh, was extremely highlighted because of the light coming through. Uh, I actually used light blues in some areas and other areas I used a bright yellow depending on um, in the reference photo what color was coming through. There's a, a part of the fur, I don't know if we'll see it in this video, um, up on the top a big puff of fur and that's that's yellow where other areas around the outline of like the ears and one area on the cheek it's a bright blue color that I used for the highlight um, so don't be afraid to uh, experiment with with uh, some of the colors you believe that you see in the picture there if you use a very soft hand and blend it in with the base colors, you'll see that it actually works.
So earlier I, I spoke about how it's important that when you're laying down layers, especially dark colors, that you use a light hand. And an example on this particular um, drawing is underneath the eye, you'll see that darker shading. Um, and later on, I found out that I actually had it too low and had to move it up. And because I had a light hand, um, using that darker color, I was able to accomplish that without um, ruining it and having to to try something different or, or having the dog look different than it did in the reference photo. So bottom line is, I, I can't say it enough, um, when you're doing your layers and you're doing your shading and your coloring, to use that light hand just in case you do need to rework the area. And again, so you can put a lot of layers in and get that uh, realism in your photos. So at this point, I'm, I'm going over once again um, highlights and um, shadows and blending them in with the base colors so that ev everything looks like it belongs to the dog and doesn't stand out. And, and like particular for this one uh, bright area on the cheek, at, at first I wasn't too happy with it, but then the more I worked with it and blended it in, um, it actually looked very realistic and looking at it from a certain vantage point it, you could tell even without the finished drawing that it was a bright highlight on the dog where the the sun was hitting the white fur and almost causing like an iridescent glow and um, that's what was on the reference photo so I just followed very closely what was on the reference photo since this this particular project is a um, turned into a commissioned photo and uh, they do want it to end up looking like their fur baby. So pay attention to your reference photos and the shadows and, and the shape of the head um, and the, the coloring in the eyes so that it looks like the uh, dog in the photo. So I think I figured out why the video was acting up like it was. Uh, I believe I had movement um, set on it, uh, movement detection, and you know as, as you color you kind of shake the table you're on. <laughs> and uh, I was shaking the camera around and causing it to do that. So hopefully I can uh, reset that and get that fixed. So I, I had to rework the ear and not only did I have to put more detail in the ear, but I also had to put detail back in the ear and coloring back in the ear because some of it was on my hand. So again, um, work from, depending on what handed you are, from uh, if you're right handed, look left top to right bottom and just be real careful. I know that there is a uh, certain paper that you can put down so that you don't smear your drawings, but uh, I have a tendency to not work well with those either, so I just need to be aware of what I'm doing. So now I'm moving down to the lower part of the face and uh, putting in, working, working the detail around the eyes is a, no, a non-stop ongoing uh, project on, on this dog, uh, which, is, which is fine. I, I really love working with the eyes. So as I start to do the areas around it, I have to blend it in. With, with those areas. I, I like to start with the eyes just to give my drawing some life. And it may sound funny to some people who don't 
don't do drawings, but um, it actually helps you connect to your subject. And it's, it's a big deal to have artists uh, connect with the subjects that they're drawing um, because then they start to connect with the personality of the subject and be able to capture it more in, in their drawing. So on, right now is where I'm putting the uh, shadow of the eye down too low. And I'll catch that later after I look at the reference photo and I'll be moving that up. So uh, as I go down to the nose, and what I did in this area, because there is some detail pattern on the nose, the nose isn't just a solid black blob at the end of the dog's um, muzzle, but there's actually grays and whites and tans. Um, there's blue that I have in there. And uh, so I did a base with the pastel pencils. And then to get the fine detail, uh, I took a, a very sharpened polychromos pencils. You can see me using them there every once in a while. And did a checkerboard pattern on the front of the nose and inside the nostrils. And then lightly went over that again with pastel to soften it up. And right now I'm adding the fur detail with the polychromos pencils around the nose because it works better with the, the fine tip. But the uh, as white as the polychromos gets, it, it doesn't get as white as the titanium white of the Derwent pastels. So I definitely like to go back over anything I do with the polychromos um, with that particular pencil since it is very bright. So on this, this part of the dog, this is one of the areas that you really need to pay close attention to your reference photo. Um, this is where their whiskers are and a lot of the characteristics of a dog's face is tied into, of course, the front of their, their muzzle. And all dogs have different patterns. So again, you'd want to take close attention, pay close attention to your reference photo as far as the details and the coloring. Uh, like on this particular pit bull, not only are there light grays and blacks, but there's also some peaches down there. I'd have to say there's at least 20 layers of color on the nose. <laughs> I kept going over it and at one point I think I even changed the shape of, of the nose again. Just looking back at the reference photo because as you start to get the areas around it completed, you, you start to see oddities or something that's off on the shape of it. Um, and it's easy fixable again if you've used a light hand in other areas. Um, I also had to take a eraser to the bottom part. Uh, I had a little bit too much white showing than the, what the reference photo did. So again I'm paying close attention to the details of the mouth and the lines of the whiskers and doing all my base coloring that I'll go back over again with layers and, and blend. So now I'm coming back through and adding some details over the blending so that it's just not one soft flat looking surface um, because 
there are parts of the fur that actually stick out. And I was I was excited on this one part. Um, a lot of dogs have discoloring where the their eyes tear, and uh, Faye was no exception. And I was able to use a soft purple in that area. And you know when you're using mostly grays and whites and blacks, it's kind of exciting when you're able to add some color. So it was a little exciting point for me being able to use a little soft purple to. Uh, notate where her little discoloring was for her tears. And this is where I realize, hey, I got that a little bit too low. So I move it up a bit, no problem. So I'm doing the finishing touches and the uh, Face is just about done on Faye. So I hope you enjoyed this work in progress video. Um, there's the completed face and head of Faye. What's left is her body, which I will complete at another time. And there's her reference photo. Thank you for joining me. And until next time, live, laugh, and create. This is Melanie with Brown Eyes Fine Art.